Welcome to the video training series. My name is Dan Dorfmiller. I'm the author of Print Reading for Construction. I'm Dan, the author, and we're back to explore Unit 8 site plans. In this unit, you will learn to recognize common features of site plans, identify property line descriptions, explain the difference between true and plan north, read contour lines, and plot topographic sections. Let's get started. Site plans are viewed like floor plans from above looking down. Site plans can include lot and block numbers or street addresses, bearings, which is direction and length of property lines, a north arrow, dimensions of front, rear and side yards, trees and shrubs to be removed or retained, grade elevations and topography, location of accessory buildings such as garage, carports, or mechanical buildings. All site plans will indicate the north direction using a north arrow, also noted as true north. When you begin looking at the site plan, first find the north arrow. It will help you visualize sun tracking and orientation relative to the property and structure. Most site plans that have structures located on them will also indicate a plan north arrow which will be used to indicate building elevations and plan orientation to the compass on the construction documents. If the walls of the building are not parallel to the compass directions, a plan north will be designated. The plan north will typically be slightly different than true north. Plan north is usually indicated in or near the title of the plan and indicated on the building elevations. Here in these title blocks, you can see the plan north is either to the right or the left. Lines defining the limits of the building plot plan or identifying a piece of property are called property lines. The property line is defined by a length and a bearing. A bearing is a direction of a line related to north, south, east, and west. Each property line is identified on the site plan. The bearings are expressed in degrees, minutes, and seconds east or west of north or south, as shown here in this bearing, north 5 degrees, 38 minutes, 47 seconds west. Bearings always start from the north or south and travel east or west. Another example, south 1 degree, 7 minutes, 55 seconds west. Some more examples up here on the compass. Uh, looking here at north, going toward the west, north 45 degrees west, or down here at the south, south 80 degrees west. Notice over here on the other side, we go north toward the east, north 20 degrees east, or north 65 degrees east. Curves are indicated by a curve number, so it can be located on the plan. They are defined using a radius, an arc length, a chord length, a chord bearing, a delta, which is the angle in degrees, and a tangent length. This makes it so the surveyor can use multiple ways to find points in the field if needed. Contours identify ground elevation. All points along a single contour line have the same elevation. The intervals between contour lines is the change in vertical distance, like one foot, two foot, five foot, and 10 foot are typical, as seen here where the contours are one foot change in elevation, 849, 850, 851. The existing contour lines are typically shown as dashed lines, while the new contour lines are shown as solid lines. The distance between contour lines indicates slope. Contour lines that are far apart indicate a gradual slope of the land and lines that are closer together indicate a steep or steeper slope. Note how the contour lines are close on the left side and further apart on the right side. When plotting the lines down into a cross section, you can clearly see how the lines that are closer together are steeper than the lines that are further apart. Also note how the contour elevation numbers will indicate whether the land is sloping down or up, as seen here with the same contour shaped lines and the reversing of the numbers 
changes the layout of the land. This site plan would be a typical of a residential site plan, locating the house with grading information. Working with existing vegetation is important. Architects can take many factors into account when planning the location of a building on a piece of property. One of the most important factors is the existing vegetation on the property. When it is not possible to build around one or more trees, the architect may consider relocating them to another place on the property. I'm not going to read all this text to you that is in the book on page 138, but would like you to consider thinking about the amount of resources buildings consume in water and other raw materials. Buildings consume a great deal of electricity, natural gas, and water. Because water is a valuable natural resource, many homeowners and building managers take steps to make water conservation a priority. And now on the benchmarks. In surveying, a benchmark is a known elevation on a post, fire hydrant, manhole cover, or any other permanent marker that is used as a basis for measuring the elevation of other topographical or building elevation points. All elevations on a given plot or site plan reference this point. Architects typically set building first floor elevations as a reference to both the actual site elevation and referenced floor plan elevations such as 0, 0.0 feet or 100.00 feet. This would be called an assumed benchmark or building elevation, which makes it easier to reference future building elevations and reference points. Typical symbols used to reference benchmarks would look like this, or the spike in the pole as noted on this site plan. Site plans use symbols like we discussed in Unit 4 to illustrate trees, shrubs, utility poles, railroad tracks on the site plan. These symbols can usually be found in a legend. Here is an example of a residential subdivision site plan. As you can see, the plan can get very detailed with lots of information. Here is a commercial site plan of a high-rise building on a tight lot. Note the civil engineer is using spot grades instead of contour lines to define elevations. A note from the author. Studying the features shown on a site plan will help you become familiar with the important information associated with the building project. Always try to form an overall bird's eye view of the site layout, then focus on the details. Time to test your knowledge. Pause the video here and review the material in Unit 8, then answer the questions on page 145 and 146. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. This book uses some large prints for students to refer to while answering questions. The best way to learn, of course, is by doing. I learned to read drawings by making drawings as a graduate architect and spending many years in the field building buildings. To learn how to open the large prints, go to YouTube and search Print Reading for Construction Getting Started or Go to the video page on my website, www.printreading.us, and look for Print Reading for Construction Getting Started video. Pause the video here, refer to figure 8-10 on page 144, and answer the questions. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers.
Activity 8.2. Pause the video, refer to Sheets 1, 4, and 5 from the Delhi Flower and Garden Center, and answer the questions on page 148. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. This concludes Unit 8.